thanks again for joining us on this segment of the show. Um, I really appreciate your time waiting, um, you know, technical difficulties and whatnot. Um, so we'll just jump right into it. Um, I want to thank all the partners for, you know, be coming together to get this pitch going. We also appreciate the time you spent uh, being mentors in, in the different uh, rooms that we had uh, in the last couple of days. So your time is really, really appreciated. Um, we will jump right into the session right now to, in the interest of time. Let me share my screen. So we'll jump right into it. Uh, uh, up to the plate is uh, SD Innovations with uh, Fareed. Fareed? There we Ivesh, go. Can you, can you unmute? Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, great. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Farid Farood, representing Smart Technologies Innovation. Uh, ST Innovation is a health technology development center on accelerating health innovations. We're located in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. We assist our clients along the health technology development path from discovery to market by offering them customized services to identify and remove barriers to health innovation process. We provide health innovators, entrepreneurs, small medium enterprises with an integrated team of professionals, such as engineers, healthcare providers, scientists, and others. SD Innovations offer its clients access to world-class equipment to bring their ideas and concepts into real functioning prototypes that are ready to be further validated and tested. We support the clinical validation of clients' health solutions by directly connecting them to care providers. SD Innovations site is connected to one of the largest teaching hospitals in Western Canada, and we have access to patients and clinical information. We are linked to some of the world's leaders in data analytics, artificial intelligence, and machine learning, where Google DeepMinds located its second global discovery lab outside of UK at the University of Alberta in Edmonton. In addition, we have an integrated team of experts in extended reality, the combination of patient data and analytical skills coupled with extended reality allows SD Innovations to offer the development of digital health solutions to our clients. By being part of a nonprofit academic institution in Canada, we're able to qualify and apply for innovation funding from federal and provincial sources, which can lower the cost of health technology development for our clients. SD Innovation also partners in co-designing and creating the next generation of health solutions with multinational health companies. We offer these connections to our clients for insights and feedbacks, which can help in producing enhanced prototypes that address real market needs and clinical challenges. We work with our clients to identify what it will take to make their health solution a success story. Please visit us at stinnovation.ca. Thank you. Thank you. Up next is Jonathan to tell us a little bit about BIP. Jonathan? There we go. Hi, everyone. My name is Jonathan Jubera uh, from the Oregon Clinical Translational Research Institute. Um, I am filling in today for Melissa Mudd, who runs our innovation and entrepreneurship programming. And I'm here to talk to you about the Biomedical Innovation Commercialization Readiness Program. Um, BIPCORP, as we call it, is meant to be an introduction to some of the foundational concepts that are frequently associated with the Lean Business Model Canvas and the Lean Launchpad, uh, which have been adopted um, and integrated into a number of agencies and programs, uh, most notably the uh, National Science Foundation's i program. Um, BIPCORP is an excellent opportunity to get your feet wet um, with regards to commercialization. We will connect you with mentors who will be available to you 
uh, throughout the, the five week course. Um, you'll have the opportunity to build on each uh, week's lessons. Uh, and then finally put it all together uh, in a, a pitch competition at the end. This is open to the public. Of course, we're doing it uh, with a virtual, uh, in a virtual format, and it will run from February 12th to March 19th. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Up next is Renee Miller from Oregon Buy and Size Incubator. Hi there, I'm Renee Miller, Program Coordinator at the Oregon Bioscience Incubator, and I'm here to tell you about our mentoring program. This is a newly revamped six-month structured program, and it runs twice a year. Um, it's for Oregon entrepreneurs to receive mentoring. The January through June cohort is coming up quickly, and we are currently accepting applications right now. So could you use some guidance, support, and accountability to help you reach your business goals? Do you have two to three months, uh, two to three hours a month to spend with your mentor, either virtually or in person, working toward those goals? If so, I encourage you to apply for the OBI mentoring program. It's absolutely free, and the application deadline is October 31st, so at the end of the week. So please take a screenshot of my slide if you can. Check out the program information and email me to apply. And I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Thanks. Thank you, Renee. Up next is Jessica from UW Foster. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jessica Roberto, and I am an assistant director at the Burke Center for Entrepreneurship at the University of Washington's Foster School of Business. And while we are the Student Center for Entrepreneurship for the UW system, I'm here today to tell you about our three flagship regional startup competitions that happen during winter and spring quarter. These competitions are open to both undergraduate and graduate students in any accredited program in a school in the Cascadia Corridor, which is Oregon, Washington, Idaho, and British Columbia, Canada, as well as Alaska. Uh, the first I want to tell you about, because it's probably going to be the most interesting to this audience, is the Holloman Health Innovation Challenge. This is an innovation and prototype competition that's focused on the potential impact of ideas on health and the healthcare space. The initial application is a five to seven page business plan that's screened by a judge's panel and we will receive feedback. And the top teams from the screening round will move on to the live round, which includes a live pitch and a trade show style interaction with not only the judges, but our community as well. And these judges at the end of the live round award cash prizes to the top teams. The other competitions we have um, are the Alaska Airlines Environmental Innovation Challenge, which is structured very similar to the Health Innovation Challenge. Um, we've definitely had teams who've come through the Health Innovation Challenge, which have a idea that can also be considered an environmental application. So you're definitely welcome to apply to both if it makes sense. And then our final competition is the Dempsey Startup Competition, which is our traditional um, industry agnostic business plan competition that helps that happens in spring quarter. Between these three competitions, we give out $300,000 in prize money annually, and many competition winners go on to become successful companies in their spaces, including health-oriented companies like Membryon, A Alpha Bio, and NanoDropper. This year's competitions will all be virtual, um, and the applications will be opening December 1st with the deadlines listed on the slide. And if you're interested in learning more about the Health Innovation Challenge or any of these competitions, um, please feel free to check us out at startup.uw.edu. Thank you. Next up is Juan Espinoza to talk about CTIP. Hi everyone, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Juan Espinoza. I'm the Managing Director of uh, CTIP, the West Coast Consortium for Technology and Innovation. We are an FDA funded pediatric medical device accelerator. We've been around for almost a decade now. Um, and we are a six and a half million dollar fund set up to support early stage pediatric medical device innovation. Um, we are, Innovators can be academically affiliated, you can be startups, you can be anywhere in industry. Um, uh, we do not take stake all of our, we do not take any stake. We, uh, all of our funding is non-dilutive. Uh, we also do grants um, and we help companies in a couple of different ways. Um, one is by leveraging our, our consortium network the, that's uh, national. Uh, so finding scientific 
uh, clinical research and industry partners. Um, we can also pay for services on behalf of companies that are in our portfolio. Uh, so if you need co consultants for regulatory market strategy, et cetera, those are the kinds of things that we can do. And of course, we because we work very closely with the FDA, we can provide a significant amount of regulatory support. Um, so if you have a pediatric device or if you have an adult device and you're interested in exploring pediatric applications, uh, please reach out to us. Thank you. Thank you, Juan. Up next is Magali. Hi, meet Nutada. Uh, Nutada is a, was a grad student uh, doing a master's degree in public health. Uh, and she invented the device you see in front of you, which is an HIV test. Um, it's not just an HIV test, the way that it's done today, it is an HIV test that works like the pregnancy test. You can do it at home, fast, get a result immediately. See a use or two for this, potentially in some communities or some countries. So it's very useful. And after she invented this great technology, she decided to try to take it into the world. And there are a few questions that were left to her besides technology, like, is insurance going to reimburse that? Are the people I'm going to serve going to have insurance to reimburse that? If they don't, how much money can they pay? And can I build a business around this to actually have something that works to really put this out into the world and help people? All of those questions, she was able to explore them through the i program, which is an NSF National Science Foundation funded program. Um, she was able to explore it because the i program helps you gain skills through training. So it's a training program. It helps connect you with mentors who will be able to connect you with industry and give you feedback. It gives you funding uh, small pockets or bigger pockets of funding uh, to uh, establish paths to those uh, potential customers. Uh, and it also gives you a path to further federal funding by having received uh, this uh, local small uh, National Science Foundation funding. You're going to hear in a minute from Oregon State University, so I'm going to be here to represent some of the other i -Corps programs in the region. Uh, myself, I work for the University of Washington. Uh, but we have partners kind of all across the region, uh, and, and uh, I'll talk for a second about the other two. Now, how might you choose between those three programs or Oregon State University as well? Um, you could use by date. We all run our programs at different dates. You could also think of it uh, depending on what kind of innovation you have. If you are working on rural healthcare, Washington State University might be a good match. If you're working on something about cold climates or the Arctic, uh, Alaska Fairbanks might be a great match. And as for the University of Washington, we have a healthcare track specifically. So you would be with a cohort of peers that are working in healthcare. And I'll be putting my email in the chat in a second if you want to reach me. Thank you. Next up is Cambia Groves, Jack, Jackal, uh, Nick Jackal. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. My name is Nick Jackal and I'm with Cambia Grove. We are a health innovation hub focused solely on realizing a healthcare system that is more patient centered and financially sustainable. We do that in any number of ways, um, but I wanted to tell you about this impactful innovation exchange that I will post a link to in the chat right now. This exchange is a free to all platform for solution builders and solution seekers to meet. So I, I know there are so many great ideas in this virtual room that are probably somewhere between the problem and solution stage of the innovation path. We are welcoming on this platform of any idea, any great idea, healthcare sure needs them. And we recognize that there's so much talent and time and passion that's been brought to this conference. I wanted to first just applaud you all for bringing it at, that focus and, and again, dedicating your weekend to focusing on some of these really intractable problems in healthcare. If you win or lose uh, the rest of this day, you are a winner in the health innovation ecosystem because we need your passion and your talent to solve some of the more complex problems that healthcare is facing. So please consider submitting your solution to this exchange. We're really here to try to connect those great solutions to the healthcare system so that innovation flows more freely. So check that out. I will also post a, a link to, to my LinkedIn if you want to connect with me. Um, I'm happy to answer any more questions. We're here to help you uh, in your next steps. I just want to, again, thank you for, for your focus and really bringing a lot of great solutions to some really complex problems. So thank you and good luck. Thank you, Nick. Next up from OS OSU is K Katie Pettinger. 
Hi everyone, my name is Katie Pettinger and I'm with the Oregon State University Advantage Accelerator located in Corvallis, Oregon. So at the Accelerator, we're focused on helping to launch high growth startups with innovative products and services. And we do this through a mix of entrepreneurial training and funding. We have some internal funding programs ourselves and if we can't fund a promising startup, then we'll help clients find the funding that they need to move forward. We work with anyone in the broader OSU community, which basically means you. Um, because of COVID, all of our programs are virtual, so we've been able to expand our network a little bit. So my colleague, Carl Mundark, is here. He's going to be talking to you about one of our main programs, Accelerate. Uh, but I'd like to talk to you about Iterate, which is the first program that we recommend to our clients. Uh, so Iterate is a great place to start if you have a business idea, but you're not sure if it's a good idea or what you should do next. Um, it's a four-week workshop where we meet once per week for one and a half hours via Zoom, of course. <laughs> Excuse me. It's very interactive and gives you the chance to get immediate feedback from instructors and mentors. We cover topics like value proposition, how to understand your market, how to know if your business idea is a good one or not, and then how to do what we call customer discovery. And then at the end of the program, you'll be in a great position to start Accelerate, assuming that your business idea, you validated it and decided that it's a good one to move forward. Um, and the, one of the best parts is that it's actually totally free. So if you're interested in joining, send me an email. Um, I'll put my email address in the chat here shortly. And we offer Iterate once per term, so fall, winter, spring. And it's actually going on right now. We just finished our first workshop um, for fall, and we'll be doing it over the next three weeks. So if you're really desperate and you want to join this term, uh, shoot me an email and we'll see what we can do. Um, otherwise, we will be opening applications uh, probably in January for our winter term one. So thanks again, everyone. And if you're interested, I will uh, send me an email. I'll send my email address to the chat. Thank you, Katie. Up next, also from Oregon State, Carl. Hi, everyone. I'm Carl Mendorf, Executive Director of Innovation Entrepreneurship at Oregon State. And as Katie mentioned, Iterate is kind of our starter program. And when you come out of that, if you think you've got something that has some legs and you want to continue working on it, you can do that through our Accelerate program. Uh, Accelerate really focuses on the right-hand side of the business model canvas, and we spend eight to 10 weeks on getting to product market fit. Um, this is a technology agnostic accelerator, and the programming being available via Zoom means we can, uh, if you have a need, we can reach out to you. Um, in the program, you work with a group of mentors who hopefully self-identify, self-select to be the most appropriate for your team. We also have interns who help you do things like uh, market research or market overviews, competitive analyses, and that sort of thing. Uh, as Katie mentioned, our programs are offered three times per year, basically every academic term. And so the next one for Accelerate will start in January. And uh, I, too, will post the link via Zoom. Uh, we do this, actually, as um, Magalie stated, in the Pacific Northwest, there's a number of our universities who are part of the National Science Foundation Innovation Corps program. So, you know, it, it really is uh, kind of a what is the best time and focus for what you're working on for which program that you should uh, pick from. So I, too, will post the link with my email address and a link to the Accelerator Advantage program. And uh, thanks for the opportunity. Thank you, Carl. Up next is Aliyah from the Nursing Innovation Hub. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Hello. Yes. Oh, hi. Hi, yes. everyone. My name is Aliyah. I'm the founder and CEO of Nursing Innovation Hub. Uh, Nursing Innovation Hub is a health tech um, company. Uh, innovation company. We focus specifically on uh, med tech and health tech startups, specifically looking at nurse led technology startups and matching industry innovators with nurses to really help um, excel commercialization in the healthcare world. Um, we are a clinician led company and we hope to be able to work with a lot of you all on really integrating your ideas and your solutions, uh, products into the healthcare market space by really vetting out a lot of the ideas that you have um, today. What we found is that a lot of the healthcare uh, startups 
really can benefit from having clinicians on their teams or on their boards or working with them to really deep dive into those ideas that they have and those products and solutions. Um, we partner with a lot of healthcare organizations and act as clinical partners as well and help bridge the gap between uh, clinical care and technology. So thank you for having us here. We look forward to connecting and uh, helping innovate and accelerate. Thank you. Next up is Cardinal Kitts. Hi everyone, my name is Varun and I'm representing Cardinal Kit. Uh, so Cardinal Kit is a project that spawned out of Stanford's Bi uh, Buyer Center for Biodesign. And essentially what we noticed is that a lot of health apps that were being built in sort of the uh, healthcare ecosystem consumed far too many resources in terms of time and money. Uh, and we realized that there were a lot of commonalities between these different apps. So we really wanted to sort of provide an open source boilerplate. So if you have, if you want to build a healthcare research app, it's super easy to do so. So it's currently open source on GitHub. You can go check it out. Uh, and it's also built entirely on a, mo um, a modern mobile stack, including HealthKit, ResearchKit, SwiftUI, and Firebase. Um, there's super easy customization. So you can see it's sort of like that Excel spreadsheet interface. So you can just go in and edit the stuff really quickly and launch the app right away. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to, free to email me email me. Uh, we're hosting a Cardinal Kit community meeting on Tuesday. So if you're interested in this sort of thing, go to cardinalkit.org and sign up. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Link Oregon. Steve? Hi. So I'm Steve Corbido. I'm from Link Oregon. I'm the executive director, but I'm also an OHSU employee. I'm based, I'm based at OHSU. So I first want to do a shout out to my home institution, also MIT. Uh, for, for bottling this up and uh, shipping it out of the Boston area. I've really been impressed this weekend with the energy and, and especially the international component here. That's been great to see. Link Oregon is a startup, but you can't take an equity position in us because we're a nonprofit. We were set up a year and a half ago by the four research universities in the state as well as state government. Our, our mission really is to support our members' mission. So that boils down to healthcare, uh, teaching and learning, research and innovation, as well as public service. The way we do this is we run a statewide middle mile broadband network. Uh, essentially, the, our members got together and said, why, why are we running separate networks? Let's go down to the fundamental raw material of telecom, which is, is dark fiber, and run our own. And that's what we've done. We own 2,700 miles of fiber in Oregon, state adjacent networks. And the reason we use fiber is really tied to scalability, growth, cost effectiveness, and the fact that it's long-term. We buy uh, a dark fiber, access to dark fiber in 20 year increments. Now, in terms of what we're trying to do, rural healthcare is a very prime focus for us. Uh, we we are, are beginning to work with healthcare institutions in rural communities with the goal of bringing them back to Portland or Eugene, which are our primary internet exchange points, as well as, as soon Boise, uh, which we'll, we will use to drain Eastern Oregon. Uh, at the same time, uh, the pandemic has really, in addition to showing the issues that are faced around in, in healthcare, uh, any, any parent knows that K-12 has had real challenges. And this is an area that we're continuing to collaborate with. We have a proposal called the Oregon Learning and Telehealth Network that we hope to instantiate on top of our platform. The state has a real broadband challenge. We think about 25% of the population doesn't have access to broadband as currently defined by the FCC. And even that, that standard is too low. We're working closely with our state broadband office to improve that. If, if, you're, if, you're, if your startup is looking at big data or internet of things, you realize the internet is not quite a commodity yet. Uh, for, for, high, for big data applications, throughput and performance really matter. If you're trying to move a petabyte from Seattle to Portland in a, in a few days, that's a non-trivial task. That's something we specialize in. We're also uh, working with science projects that are building statewide arrays and will take advantage of our middle mile network. Um, we're beyond a network, we're a collaboration platform, very interested in research computing and cybersecurity for two. Uh, I, I posted a link to our, our, our website and again, thank you for the opportunity. And I'm glad to talk to any any of the participants here about uh, bandwidth or 
or potential applications that would run on the network. Thank you, Steve. Up next, we hear from Aventuring. Hey guys, uh, this is Stan uh, Hanks. I'm a general partner at Aventurine. Um, uh, first, thanks for having us. This is fun. Several of our team have been uh, participating throughout the weekend, and uh, it's been a huge amount of fun. And we've met a, a lot of new people, and we've run into some old people. Um, Aventurine invests in generational IP. We, we invest in technologies that are going to have a long time, a long term impact in a variety of different sectors. Health tech and biosciences is one of those that we focus on uh, a great deal. Uh, unlike most institutional venture capital, we recognize that this is a play for the long haul and it takes a long time to bring the technology to market from initial research inception to a commercial product that, uh, that is uh, present in the market. So we don't think about this the way uh, institutional venture capital does. So think of us as super early stage funding for uh, the development of a commercial, uh, commercial property around really, really seminal research. Um, we also recognize that many times the researchers that are making the biggest contributions to forward progress in the technology are not necessarily particularly well suited to running companies. Um, and in those cases, we also have partnerships with a variety of seasoned entrepreneurs that, uh, that, that we connect with the teams to uh, move them forward and be much more commercial. So uh, we're, uh, we have a very different approach in that regard. We're not really quite venture capital and we're not really quite an incubator. But if you think of us as some sort of weird hybrid between the two, with a focus on uh, on the long-term impact of the work that you're doing as opposed to short-term capital gains, um, that'd be a pretty reasonable uh, description for us. Many of us are former uh, former academicians or former commercial scientists who have been there. We know what your challenges are. And we also know the, uh, the lay of the land to get you from here to, uh, to where you need to be. Thanks again for having us this weekend. Uh, you can find us uh, uh, out there at uh, venturine.com. And uh, if, uh, if we haven't already been in contact with you and you're interested in, in uh, working with us, uh, please feel free to reach out. Thank you. Next up is Lisa from Oregon Bio Biosciences Association. Hi, uh, congratulations first to all of these weekend's participants for making it here today. Um, you should all be very proud of yourselves. But if you enjoyed this process and are passionate about your problem, it should not end today. Commit to those next steps. If you remember back to John Bloom's comments from Friday evening's kickoff, he admitted that their team had a bad idea at the end of their hacking medicine challenge nine years ago, but they iterated and now John is running Podometrics, a successful company that envisions a world without diabetic foot ulcers. John said on Friday that the single most important fact that led to their success is merely that they agreed as a team just to meet up on Mondays and keep working on it. My name is Lisa Bzinovich with the Oregon Bioscience Association, and I wanna share how you can leverage our organization, or if you're located outside of the Pacific Northwest, organizations like ours. In Oregon, we have 820 private bioscience firms working in biopharma, medical device, digital health, and diagnostics. Our strong startup ecosystem is represented in that pie chart there. Um, in the size of those 820 organizations, over half of them have just one, between one and four employees. Our mission at the Oregon Bioscience Association is to support the entire life science ecosystem including the education systems, academic research activities through startups and more established companies. And we do that through our three pillars, advocate, cultivate, and educate. There's a lot to unpack under each of those pillars and many opportunities for Inventathon teams to be supported from here. So I encourage you to check out our website and reach out to learn more. But for a tip of the iceberg view, our partnership on this Inventathon checks both the cultivate and educate boxes. 
and we're excited to follow and support you on your journey after today. First, today's winners will receive a one-year membership in Oregon Bio and complimentary registration for our upcoming annual conference in November. You can see the dates there on the slide, complete with company pitches and research fast pitches, as well as panel discussions and keynote addresses by nationally and regionally recognized industry executives, VCs, and other stakeholders. All Inventathon participants are invited to attend the conference at a discount. Also, Oregon Bio is partnering with OHSU Inventathon to hold a post hack event. Mark your calendars for April 21st and stay tuned for more information on how Inventathon teams can come back and compete for additional prizes. I look forward to seeing many of you at our conference in a couple weeks, staying engaged in your progress, and meeting again in April. All the best to you in your next steps, and thank you for keeping our ecosystem strong. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Um, I just want to thank all our partners today, not only for the presentations right now, but uh, all your contributions throughout this weekend. Um, I encourage anyone that's interested to reach out to them directly or to the Vethadon team to see uh, how we can link you uh, up with them. Um, I will now hand over to Sarah.